Welcome to Empowered Health. As always, we have a wide variety of interesting topics on today's show to help you take charge of your health. We're talking herbal medicine, beds that heal, and hearing a first-hand story about laser eye surgery. And later, I'll hit the barbecue with registered holistic nutritionist Julia Olton and grill up some salmon. Right now, we're going to take a look at the amazing story of Bob Koss and his son, Michael. So I was ready to retire and enjoy life with loved ones and, and family in Quebec City, our hometown, and uh, our life changed completely. That's when Bob and Suzette got the call that would change their lives forever. Their son, Michael, had been in a devastating car accident. And the, the van that they were, they were in flipped over two or three times. And that's how Michael sustained his, his brain injury. His youngest son, six months old, was also severely injured, sustained a traumatic brain injury. He was put into a coma for a few days. His wife um, had some physical injury, and their daughter, thank God, was uninjured. They got on the next plane and never left his side. Michael was in a coma for six months. Doctors said nothing could be done. By coincidence, through my youngest son, Dwayne, his father-in-law on TV heard about hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So I started doing research. So hyperbaric oxygen therapy is, the word hyper uh, is sort of above, and baric is pressure. So you're delivering a high pressure oxygen uh, to, the, to the body. And what happens is uh, red blood cells carry oxygen. Uh, we normally, when we breathe air, it carries oxygen. But in a hyperbaric situation, it's pressurized. So there's a lot more oxygen that's carried into the blood. And that oxygen then goes into the plasma and also goes into the cerebral spinal fluid and also goes into uh, the lymphatic fluid. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy has demonstrated benefits for a variety of health issues. To date, however, conclusive evidence does not support using it for patients with brain injuries. But that didn't stop Bob and Suzette from trying. We undertook these therapies against doctors' recommendations because doctors were not knowledgeable of the benefits of such therapy for brain injuries. They recommended that Michael be put into a permanent home, and um, we did not accept that. So I contacted every single hospital in Canada, from Halifax to Vancouver, every single hospital who had a chamber, and none of them would accept to take Michael in the condition he was in, none of them. After an exhaustive search, Bob finally found a clinic in Richmond that would take Michael on as a high-risk patient. Doctors at the Richmond Hyperbaric Clinic were confident that there was something they could do. When Michael was brought into the chamber, with the paramedics, Michael was in a total fetal position and he was only tracking to the left. And after the third hyperbaric treatment, all of a sudden, Michael started to focus. And then after the fourth treatment, Michael started to move a small finger. The causes also tried other alternative therapies like Locomat, but attribute the majority of Michael's progress to hyperbaric oxygen therapy which he continued for two and a half years. We started the, the treatment at the end of October 2006. And by Christmas time, Michael was saying his first word. We were seeing progress all the time, and today we're still seeing some progress, so. Now I'm able to walk around the house and to see my kids with only a cane. Not only can Michael walk, but he can do a whole host of things that doctors said he would never do again. None of this would have been possible if the causes had accepted no as an answer back in 2006. Okay, when I woke from my coma, my six-month coma, I decided that I wanted to make a difference and that I wanted to inspire others to be the best that they could be. The first thing I did was to write a book called The Courage to Come Back. The purpose of me writing this book was to inspire others to be the best that they could be in their own situations.
coming up on Empowered Health. If you're going to use herbal medications, you need to ask yourself two questions. Does it work? And is it safe? Welcome back. A lot of people swear by herbal medicine to help with various health issues, especially colds. But how much herbal medicine, and more importantly, which types of medicine are most effective? I'm sure they can't do too much damage, but Randy Shore's back. Let's get some Kleenex, because he's going to blow off the lid of herbal remedies. Randy? If you're going to use herbal medications, you need to ask yourself two questions. Does it work? And is it safe? Valerian is widely used to treat nervousness and insomnia. And there is some weak evidence that herbal valerian capsules do promote sleep and calm. It is, after all, the plant that Valium is made from. Two problems. There is no standardized dosage, and you have no way of knowing how potent the herbal product is. When you take valerian, you really don't know how much you're taking. Because it is sedating, Valerian could react badly with alcohol, other sedatives, and with anti-anxiety medications. In fact, you really shouldn't be mixing herbal remedies with prescription drugs at all. St. John's wort is a plant-based dietary supplement that a lot of people use as an antidepressant or to treat seasonal affective disorder, winter sadness. Early studies showed that this plant does have a small effect on mild depression, but virtually no effect on severe depression. Funny thing is, the more scientists improved their studies to assess the effect, the smaller the effect became. It's not a very encouraging trend line. While St. John's wort is generally considered safe, it does interact with a long list of medications. I'll leave you with a little happy news. The very popular cold remedy, Echinacea, appears to withstand scientific scrutiny. A recent analysis of research published in The Lancet found that Echinacea not only shortened a cold once you have it, it appeared to protect some people from a cold, even when they were purposely exposed to the virus. The bad news is that there are hundreds of Echinacea products on the market, all with different potencies and made with different extraction techniques. Some are even made from different species of the plant, so figuring out what's going to work is a bit of a guessing game. Echinacea is considered safe for short-term use, but its effect over the long term are unknown. If you plan to use herbal remedies, tell your doctor if you think a herbal cure is strong enough to be an effective medication, it's probably strong enough to interact with other drugs. And that can be dangerous. I'm Randy Shore for Empowered Health. Your back affects your daily health. Welcome to another installment of Your Spine, Your Health. Because you have a spine, it's important to understand what chiropractic care means to your health. Your health always starts with a regulatory college. In this case, the College of Chiropractors of BC serves to ensure you receive the appropriate diagnosis and care from a qualified chiropractic doctor today and tomorrow. That's also why BC's chiropractors fund research and education. Today, I want to introduce you to Dr. Jason Bousset, whose work may guide best treatment choices for a better recovery. Chiropractors often face a challenge of trying to understand which of my patients are likely to do better or worse than another, and which of my patients require more care or more attention. And so if there was some way to help chiropractors triage more effectively, who are my high-risk patients? And for what reason are they high-risk? And can I tailor my approach to try to help that person in a different way than someone who's at very low risk of prolonged recovery. One of the things Dr. Busse is looking at is an often overlooked factor in patient recovery, attitude and belief. For this study, a questionnaire was administered to a group of patients with standardized care who were all to receive knee surgery. We had an instrument that we designed to capture patients' beliefs and attitudes towards their recovery at a very early point in their recovery. We asked patients' beliefs and attitudes uh, about a month after they had surgery, and then we followed them forward for a year. And what we found is that there were 27 items in our survey that separated it out the group that had recovered and gone back to work versus the group that had not recovered and was unable to go back to work. And all of these variables were potentially modifiable. Theoretically, we can take this questionnaire and administer it to the patient. 
By looking at the items that the patient may have endorsed, we can then tailor the intervention to try and modify those particular variables that seem to be standing in the way of their recovery. You know, you need that human element. You can't just have a computer saying, well, you're in this bucket, too bad, here's why. You need to have a clinician that's going to interpret and then incorporate that into the treatment plan in a skillful way. As you can see, it's not just about what we can do for you today. We're working to build a better tomorrow with better health outcomes for you. The College of Chiropractors of BC sets the standards for safety, outcomes, and your informed consent. Hey guys, my name is Simona Marian and this is Jamie Sanulf. Today we are going to show you a warm-up exercise called Band pull apart for your simple fitness tips. Band pull aparts are a great exercise to add into your warm-ups, as they activate the posterior muscles of the upper back. These muscles are usually weak in people with bad posture. So Simona, we're going to start with your feet about hip width apart, your core is going to be drawn in, and your shoulder blades are going to be depressed, not elevated. We're going to use this rubber band. As you keep your arms straight, you're going to exhale, bringing the band to your mid-chest. Good, that's one. Two, great. You can perform this exercise for 10 to 15 reps just like that, and for one to two sets. All right, try this out, and we'll see you next episode. After the break. The big advance in laser refractive surgery in our clinic over the last few years has been the introduction of blended vision, so people can still see well at near and in the distance without glasses. You're watching Empowered Health, We've talked about how important it is for your health to get a good night's sleep, but did you know that there's such a thing as beds that heal? Farooq Manji from The Sleep Shop is back to talk about how beds can promote healing. Take a look. In this segment, we're talking to Farooq Manji, the bed expert, about beds that have healing properties. Now, Farooq, are there really beds that actually heal or help heal? Yes, they're, they won't directly help heal, but they help the body rejuvenate itself. And there are components in mostly the top layers of mattresses nowadays that will help in that process. One of the components that is new to the industry, uh, but not new to the fitness world, is salient. Salient is found in a lot of mattress protectors. They can be found in a lot of the mattresses themselves. Salient is a product that will help the body continually hydrate itself, oxygen flow through the blood, and it helps that uh, healing process. Are there other products that we need to be aware of as far as materials are concerned that can help the body, you know, get the restorative benefits of sleep? Yes, there are. People are finding when they sleep, temperature is a big issue. They either get too hot or they get too cold. So there are products out there that help to regulate the temperature. One of the newest that's available is called TempSense. Uh, it is found in the new mattress that we're at Sleep Shop we're carrying called the Dr. Bruce Bed. TempSense will help to regulate, keep your temperature at an even keel throughout the night so you don't get too hot or you don't get too cold. How does it do that? It's all based on the molecular level. So with that helping you keep your uh, temperature not very cold and not very hot, so it doesn't uh, disrupt your sleep pattern. And so can you have that bed where you've got two people in the bed, one who's a hot sleeper and one who's a cold sleeper, and it's providing each with what they need? Absolutely, and that's what it's designed to do. It responds to you. Absolutely. Any other products that we need to be aware of that are sort of new on the market right now? Not necessarily new, but something that is not often talked about or even found in a lot of mattresses, but just natural wool. The Wool Story is another product that will help to regulate your temperature. It definitely helps in the healing process. Another big benefit of wool is it's antimicrobial. So you won't get the growth of dust mites and molds and fungi and things like that. So it'll keep your mattress environment very, very healthy. Oh, thank you. That's valuable and very interesting information, especially to know that, yes, sleep already helps us to recover, but th there are materials that help to uh, accentuate that, that process. Absolutely. So thanks for joining us on this segment of Empowered Health Sleep.
More recently, we've been able to uh, deal effectively with the over 45, uh, 40 to 45 age group who've lost their focusing power. So the big advance in laser refractive surgery in our clinic over the last few years has been the in introduction of blended vision, which uh, involves making the uh, laser refractive surgery somewhat multifocal so people can still see well at near and in the distance without glasses. Blended vision is a major advancement in laser refractive surgery. It works by increasing depth of field in both eyes. This allows the dominant eye to see distance and intermediate, and the other eye to see near and intermediate, creating a blending of vision that gives both eyes similar vision. Well, the evolution of laser refractive surgery is the story of my professional life. Throughout the 80s, everyone was evolving in, in, in eye surgery, the idea of putting intraocular lenses in the eyes and making them optically perfect, as well as getting rid of the cataract. Well, that naturally evolved into the ability to make people opti optically perfect, even sometimes when they didn't have cataracts. Those technologies began to become more significant uh, for normal, healthy-eyed people. Until recently, the only laser treatment for presbyopia was monovision that is correcting only the dominant eye for distance and leaving the other for near vision. With laser blended vision, the process has been taken one step further. We're doing uh, two procedures today on both uh, men who are somewhat nearsighted. They have myopia and we've measured exactly the degree of myopia and the optics of the situation, both digitally and topographically, in ways that are not normally measured in a routine eye examination. We've fed all that into the pre-operative device that actually does the programming for their particular laser treatment on each of their eyes. We have their digital chip prepared for each of their eyes, which we will put right into the laser, which reflects the same pre-op testing. Prior to entering the room, numbing drops are placed into the patient's eyes. Whereby a flap is raised uh, under the surface of the cornea, the treatment is undertaken to change the, change the shape of the cornea under the flap, and then um, the, the flap is put down. The actual laser treatment only takes 20 to 60 seconds, and patients can expect to see at a 2020 level one day post-operation. I mean, it was 99 percent of the time was just the preparation. The whole procedure was over within, what, two, three, four minutes? Yeah. We're wearing glasses for 34 years now, so it's nice to see without it. So we've had more than 20 years under our belt of doing this, and, and the engineers and the technologists have helped a lot. It's been a huge synergistic effort, so I think there are now tens of millions of these surgeries done every year throughout the world. Coming up on Empowered Health. The salmon that we're using today is the spring salmon. It's wild and fresh. This cooking and nutrition portion brought to you by Save On Foods. In this cooking segment on Empowered Health today, we are going to share an amazing barbecue salmon recipe with you. And to do that, we've got registered holistic nutritionist Julia Alton with us. Julia, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. We are going to start with a simple marinade with mm -hmm. five ingredients. Okay. First ingredient is uh, soy sauce. Okay. The second ingredient is uh, sake. And for those of you who don't want to use um, an alcoholic uh, version of sake, it, rice wine will work just fine. Okay. And then we've got some ginger, garlic, and brown sugar. Okay. If you'd like to put those in here, and we'll just stir this up. Wow. <laughs> and uh, garlic, uh, two cloves of garlic and a tablespoon of grated ginger. Okay. And we just stir this up. This recipe is so simple. The mm -hmm. hardest part is waiting for it to... To be done um, so you to can eat it. marinate. Uh, the salmon that we're using today is the spring salmon. It's mm -hmm. fresh, so it's come... It's wild and fresh, and we're just going to place these pieces. I would place them flesh down in here. Okay. And then pour the marinade over the over, salmon. Over the salmon? Yeah. And then we just put it in the fridge for... Up to three hours. Up to three hours. For me, I don't like to put it in for the full three hours mm -hmm. because I don't want to taste the marinade. I want to taste the, the salmon. The salmon more, right. So once this has come out of the fridge, right. uh, we're going to place it on the barbecue. And, and we've, we've already got something started. We, we put two pieces on the barbecue oh, already. Nice. 
So you put a piece of tin foil on mm -hmm. here, set your barbecue at about a medium heat, mm -hmm. and cook it for about seven to ten minutes. Seven to ten? Yeah. Uh, then we just plate it up and serve it for a delicious meal. Right, perfect. So Julia, the salmon's all done? It is. It was served with uh, a bit of brown rice and some a selection of vegetables, both grilled on the barbecue. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and try this. Mmm, this is fantastic. Well, I, I understand like now I mean, what you meant by saying that you don't want to taste the marinade too much, but the salmon, and it comes out. Thank Good. you for being on the show and teaching us this recipe. You can find out more about this on our website and keep watching the show for more great segments. Thanks again, Julia. Thank you. Like salmon? Well, you're going to like this segment even more because registered dietitian Crystal Higgins joins me to give us some ideas about how to enjoy salmon even more in our diets. Crystal, welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, we know that salmon is full of good omega-3 fatty acids and it's healthy for the heart, but there's this misconception that it's hard or complicated to cook. What do you have to say about that? That's right. Well, a lot of people don't really know what to do with salmon, but the truth is it's one of the easiest animal proteins to prepare. And in fact, all you need to do is season, bake or broil. And the best part is it's done within 15 to 20 minutes. Any ideas for flavoring salmon? Yes. Well, salmon naturally has a very nice tender flavor, so less is truly more. But if you make the marinade yourself, you can control the amount of sugar, fat and salt that goes in there. Okay, so making the marinade at home, what are the ideas to make sure that it's tasty and also low on calories at the same time? Lemon and dill is very common, it's very popular, but you can get really creative with some different types of more elaborate flavor combinations. So even combining red wine with a little maple syrup, Asian style, you can throw some sake in there and some low sodium soy sauce. You can up the antioxidants by using a fruit marinade, something like blueberries, and perhaps the most creative combination I've seen is using green tea in an infusion with some various spices. Well, Crystal, thank you for being on the show and thank you for giving us all these great ideas for enjoying salmon with different kinds of marinades and different kinds of other things that can be paired with it. Fantastic. Thanks. Thank you. Well, that's all for this episode of Empowered Health. Among other things, I found all that stuff about herbal medicine quite intriguing. Yeah, me too. Stay tuned for more next week. We'll have information that will help you empower your health. Be sure to follow us on Twitter for news and updates. We'll see you again. Bye.